Hey guys, Jamie and Jeremy from Gildbrook Farm and welcome to The Dirt. We're going to be talking about our new deep well and answering all your questions. So for those of you guys that are new to the channel, The Dirt is where we share a little bit about why we do what we do, why we think what we think. We haven't done a little a dirt in a while because there really hasn't been much going on. And now we have something to talk about, which is our new deep well on our off-grid property. And we're going to be answering a lot of the questions that you guys have been asking over the last three videos that we posted uh, showing the entire process of installing this deep well. And uh, I'm going to be the one asking the questions. And uh, the boss here is going to be the one answering this time. <laughs> Let me get out my list of questions that I have here. Yeah, I posted a, a, a thing on the community tab on YouTube asking if anybody had any questions to go ahead and leave them there so we could answer them. And you all left a few really good questions. Cool. And this has been a learning process and a good opportunity to share it with you. So let's do it. All right. So the first question is, why put the well on top of the hill instead of lower down on the property and pumping up the hill? And I'm going to explain a little bit for those of you guys that are, that are new. Uh, we bought a piece of property, 20 acres, that has three ridges. We are building on the first or southernmost ridge of the property. And so people want to know, why are you putting your well on top of there as opposed to at the bottom because you have to drill deeper? And uh, why don't you answer Yeah, that? it all kind of works out the same. I mean, yeah, there's a little bit <clears throat> more money to drill a little deeper, but you still have to pump the same amount up, up, up the hill. Um, and <clears throat> a couple reasons. We wanted the wellhead as high up as we could get it uh, so that we wouldn't have runoff going down the hill and potentially contaminating that wellhead seeping down in. Even though they do grout the wellhead to help prevent groundwater from seeping down in the hole, we wanted to eliminate that issue. Uh, and the second reason is this is probably the only spot on all of the property we have out of all of the places that we found to potentially drill that we could actually get a rig in here safely. Every other place that we found potential water sources. It would have to be cleared and a There would be a, a lot of installed. excavation. Uh, there, would, there was a lot of risk of the, the, the rig just rolling down the hill because that thing is 30 tons and when the derrick is up, it is super top heavy and it has got to be perfect. And almost everybody we called to come in and look at it were just like, ah, they, they didn't want to. I mean, that's a $950,000 rig brand new and so we ended up getting lucky that we did find water here and i'm glad that we put it here plus it's real close to the house it's like 46 feet from where the house will be so uh, that's why <laughs> long story short all right so the next question is why not just use a rain catchment or a runoff with a cistern catch runoff with a cistern yeah, a lot of people do use rain catchment systems off their uh roof and into cisterns and all that and i just gotta say i, I hope that this our, our days of drinking runoff water are over we've been on a seep spring that has basically been run off with a spring i've mentioned several times that for you know a year or so yeah we're basically washing laundry in dirty muddy water um you know we we do have a berkey for filtering our drinking water but for our showers and all that kind of stuff, um, doing laundry, or using that seep spring, and it, it is not the cleanest. I mean, there's lizards and other creepy crawlies that can get down into that well. Um, the, the, the springs do run across several properties. We don't know what other people are doing on their other properties mm -hmm. that can possibly be contaminating that well. You can never control what somebody else is doing on their property. Yeah, if you watched the uh, previous video where uh, Chad, the well driller, was talking about groundwater and all that 90% of the world's drinking water fresh water is underground and 10% is runoff and, and surface water like ponds and streams and things like that and it's that 10% <clears throat> that 90% of all the municipal water sources use as their drinking water they would rather pump and filter it because it's cheaper and so we wanted to have a deep well with virgin water in it and the water that comes into this well comes through granite that takes decades to kind of seep through and, and filter and, and we wanted to make sure that we had a good clean reliable source of drinking water so that's plus, why plus as as the driller explained in i believe was the first video you know the the deep well isn't really susceptible to droughts um, right and it's the surface water that is susceptible to drought so we should not ever have a problem with running out of water 
knock on wood, knock on uh, wood. with our deep well. Right. And that's uh, I also want to say too that it's not that we're not going to do rain catchment because we do plan on doing rain catchment systems in addition to mm -hmm. our deep well. So we probably will be doing that as well. Yeah, for irrigation. <coughs> irrigation, yeah. So the next question is, is when you were water dowsing, does it matter what shoes you wear? I always heard not to wear rubber boots. You know, I don't know that it matters. Uh, I wore the bogs, I wore hiking shoes, two or three, four other guys that were out here, different well drillers and different people who are around here. It's kind of a thing where people, the, the old hill folk are good at dousing for water. And there were guys out here in leather work boots and, and it didn't kind of matter what boots they were wearing. Uh, we used rods that we made out of uh, metal ladder wire and mm -hmm. there were guys out here that just used branches, um, like a Y. And they all consistently found, a, a, had a reaction at the same exact spot as we did. Uh, shoes don't matter. It didn't matter what the shoes were. So I would or say- Or what the rod was. Or if what it was the rod metal was. Or yeah. It didn't have to be a certain type of branch, you know, they just broke a branch off that was Y-shaped, I believe. Yeah, like and, a, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Shoes don't matter. Did you guys drill where the magic wands told you to? Yep. We, like I said, we had us and numerous other well drillers and local people who have experience locating water. Well, oh, I want to say, though, that we did find several places on, on the top of this ridge where we were going to drill so yeah. i found the first place down over this hill obviously inaccessible to a, a drill rig mm -hmm. uh, there's another spot over here and then this we we just kind of assumed that there's some sort of vein running in here so we started witching in this area when we found out we couldn't even drill like a couple feet uh to my right here just because yeah this spot right here is right where that huge oak was and when we knocked soft. that over there's no way we could set a, a, you know the outrigger of the rig here because it would just sink in and it would flip down the hill so any anywhere any farther this way he couldn't go so so we witched this whole top everyone found that you know the they witched in this area we found this exact spot that's exactly where they we pinpointed a flag and that's exactly where they drilled pretty much right on the dot right on the money he backed it up lifted it up and po poked it right down where that flag was so yeah where the magic wands were is right where this well is do you think having the land doused beforehand was worthwhile? And I, I think what people are referring to there in that question is, as I think there are professional people out there that do water dowsing, and they're wanting to know if perhaps uh, it's I mean, worth for paying us, somebody. it didn't cost any money to do, so yeah, it was worth it because in our area, like I said, a lot of these everybody hill, does hill it. folk. I mean, everybody does it. It's just kind of a thing that they enjoy doing. But I'm sure there are areas in the country where people could probably charge money to come out and water witch or water douse, and and would it be worth it? I can't answer that question. For us, it was worth it because it didn't cost us a thing. We didn't cost us a thing, and we had numerous people who had many years of experience doing the same thing, uh, all found the same spot. So for us, it was just a little bit more of a reassurance, I guess. <clears throat> Next question is why spend so much money on a well when you already have at least one spring? And this, I kind of sort of answered this one a little bit earlier. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, the spring again uh, is not what we w would consider to be a reliable source of drinking water. Susceptible Pump to droughts. Yeah, susceptible to droughts, runoff, contamination. Um, even though we do filter it, we wanted a pure, reliable source of drinking water, and for us this was an investment it was a it was a chunky investment but yeah, it's, it's one of the chunky. it's it's one of the most important things for de developing a homestead developing a, a, a house or a property you got to have reliable clean drinking water now that said yes we do still have the spring we can still use the spring uh, we may develop it further for other uses but this is our house drinking water this is going to run our house in my opinion if you are going to be staying or living on a property, if you purchase a property that you're going to live on that's supposed to be your forever home, I, the, the number one thing that you can invest in is water. You, you can't do anything without water. You can't have a garden. You can't drink. You can't function. You can't, can't do anything animals. 
nothing without water. And, you know, again, the, if you're doing just rain catchment or uh, seep spring or something like that, you're susceptible to all kinds of things like contaminant droughts, all that kind of stuff. If you have a deep well, you have water. And that is a security measure. A lot of people put money away in savings. They put money in 401ks. We put part of our money into this well because it is an investment <clears throat> for us. Now you have education in biology and you spent time as a environmental environmental scientist not engineer scientist yeah in an environmental company and so you've had your fair share of experience with contaminated water and groundwater yeah. and, and and you've seen what that that entails so it takes years to clean up yeah you know you don't know what's in it benzene mm -hmm. it could be anything yep. arsenic uh, we still haven't had this tested yet but we'll get to that in a second all right, next question is, with the difficulty of getting equipment to you, have you thought about fire suppression in the finished house with sprinklers? And, you know, if you guys watched the first videos, you know that we had some trouble getting the truck up here. We've had trouble getting people up here just to even quote us on, on uh, doing different work up here. So what is your... Yeah, as far as fire safety goes, it's one of the reasons we cleared so much of this area. We're trying to create a fire break so that, you know, we have enough... The, the tallest trees are far enough away so that if they were on fire and they fell, they didn't catch the house on fire. And having a reliable source of water obviously is really important. We do have a fire department, it's a volunteer fire department. It's not very far away, but I think it would still take them quite a bit of time to get here because of the mountainous terrain and the roads and all of that. So yes, that's yeah. an important consideration for what, what we're doing going forward. <clears throat> and so we will have storage tanks uh, at least one and probably two, not just for fire suppression, but for irrigation and, and things like but, that. But don't look for that right away because, yeah, that's not a, you, you know, you, when you're working with, again, we're trying to do this debt-free. We still debt want to have a front and back porch. Yeah. When you're trying to do this debt-free like we are, you have a limited amount of funds to, to spend on doing everything that you want to do. And so yeah. you, you got to pick and choose what is the most important thing. And it's not that fire suppression is not important but we already have a fire department. And so there is already one thing there to help, you know, against fires. We also have the barrier break. Uh, there's also insurance too, which, mm -hmm. you know, we will have for our house. So we have a couple of things in place already. So jumping right in and spending money on things such as sprinklers and, and whatnot, uh, water tanks is not gonna be a priority. The priority is going to be getting the house up and getting us functional. Yeah, but, but it is in the plan. we will do it. It is part of the plan. Um, it's just not number one on the list. If a drill bit breaks, do you have to pay for it? Uh, a drilling, part of the well drilling bit, no. We did have, uh, our guys <coughs> did break apart, so do we have to pay for that? Yeah, no, they broke up. Uh, hydraulic cylinder now we do not have to pay for that it's not like a lot of sawmills will charge you for the blade every time they have to change a blade if you're having lumber milled into your logs milled into lumber but for well drillers and similar trades it's just part of the overhead part of doing business you do pay for the bit it's just not directly uh, it comes out in uh, in the bill yeah we're gonna get to that in a minute for those of you <laughs> curious I've never seen them use plastic casing. Is that better than steel? This is, uh, I think, s Schedule 120 or 16, I don't know. It's the equivalent of, it, it's really heavy duty PVC well casing. It's made specifically for well casing, but it is PVC. In our last house, I had our house, uh, it was a 40 year old well, and it was steel casing. Never had a problem with it. It was super reliable. I lived there well over 10 years and never had one issue with that well. Um, but I think at the time that that well was drilled, probably PVC casing wasn't very common or even available at that time. PVC doesn't rust, it doesn't corrode. Uh, if the water is acidic or has a lot of iron in it or any of those kinds of things, it, it does not affect PVC well casing. So in, in that, I would say, yeah, it's a little better. It's also a lot more cost effective per foot to install. Holy crap, can you imagine having to spend that in steel? I cannot have? imagine having to sink 140 feet of steel casing and, and paying that bill. Uh, this was a very deep well. But yeah, I, I would say PVC is, I don't know if it's better, but I think it's better. More cost effective for Certainly sure. more cost effective and it, it's no worse. So yeah, it's better. Will you have the water tested? Yes, as part of 
the whole permitting process of getting a well installed they come out and they inspect whenever they grout the casing as you saw probably in the, in the last video then they'll come out now that we've got everything plumbed and we have a tank and the well head is installed they'll come out and do a well head inspection um, and then the last thing will be they will come out and do a sample and test the water and then we'll be done with the county as far as that goes uh, but all of that is included in the cost of getting your well permit when they come out and tell you where you can put your well or whatever uh, they'll test for the most common contaminants or whatever but we separately will also have our water tested by an independent lab who will test for everything including things like arsenic and benzene and you know I think the county does test for lead but we'll, we'll test for everything and we're probably gonna test that seep spring down there as yeah, well and we'll do the sample of that spring down there too just just to know I mean we've been filtering it but I just really want to know that Maybe water you versus know. this water ignorance yeah. is sometimes bliss because we did not test that water before moving here yeah. you know that's something that we probably should have done um, but this being for the most part raw land uh, and the opportunity that came up and the timing and everything yeah. I mean it is coming out of the side of a mountain and there's not a lot around here so mm. <laughs> I, if you have the opportunity to I always suggest testing your water mm -hmm. and testing your soil if that is yeah. if that is in the, the budget and also in your time frame next question is, is uh, with you guys being on solar why did you not use a DC solar pump <clears throat> okay I really wanted to be able to use a DC pump and a solar pumping solution until we I figured out that the water level was not nearly as high as we had hoped or anticipated um, I think that we still probably could so, so what was the final head the final Static head well the first time I measured it was 343 and then, then I measured it again yesterday and it was up to 330 so that's still really really far down and we were expecting it originally to be like 150 mm -hmm. feet down um, and so at that depth that requires one heck of a pump uh, it actually changed a lot of things through a monkey wrench in our plans and we had to move from a one horse pump to a one and a half horse pump at 230 volts we could still, I believe, pull that off with like an SQ Flex, a Grunfos SQ Flex uh, system. But with all of the additional components and hardware and things that we would need to buy in order to make that work as equivalent to what we chose, which was a Grunfos SQ, uh, it just wasn't worth the money right now. At, in, in the future, we could possibly and will possibly do a DC pump as a solar day pump into tanks for irrigation and for for the animals down the hill but for now we just wanted to get a water system in place that could run the house uh, with a reliable proven pump and so we ended up going with the Grunfuss I think it's the 5SQ 15-450 that's in the last video right yeah so the five is five gallons a minute sq is the pump series 15 is 1.5 horsepower and the 450 is the amount of head that it'll push and it's a 230 volt pump and if you, you can see it in our last video is the water too deep to use an emergency manual pump now that's something that i really wanted to have i wanted to have like a simple pump yeah we style. really wanted to have like a in addition to you know the the water line coming out of the top of the well head we wanted to have a manual like a bison or a simple pump and at the depth that we ended up being it's just not not practical uh i'm not sure what the depth of bison pumps can go but i think the simple pumps about the max is 325 and that's even then that's like a, that's over three thousand bucks for putting a manual pump in at that depth and i don't even think it'll work so, so no manual pump no manual us. pump here it, it's a deep pump deep well we'll just have to come up with other emergency plans like catchment systems and yeah whatnot. we'll just pump into tanks will you add a filtering system to the house hopefully not hopefully we won't have to uh hopefully all i have to do is put like a one of them spin on filters for sediment if there's any of that <clears throat> uh, but we won't know until we get the water tested as to whether we need a softener or any kind of filtering system uh, judging by what came out of this pipe earlier today it looked good I mean it was really nice but we don't know yet really how many chickens deep is your well 
that's a weird question. What? Uh, ass assuming a chicken is a foot tall, then our well is 465 chickens deep. That's a lot of tummies. Yeah, that's a lot of chicken wings. <laughs> Are you going to put anything around the well, such as a building or a shed? Yes. Uh, when I had them, <clears throat> I d already designed a well house for this. It'll be real similar to our old house. I'm, I'm going to make a block well house um, and I'm going to put a manual transfer switch and load center in here so you can just plug a generator in. If the if power goes down or anything happens, you plug a generator in, flip a switch, turn it on, boom, you got power and water. Um, so that's why I had them leave me an extra five or six feet of pump wire here so that when the house is built, I'll be able to move the tank into the basement of the house and wire this into the transfer switch and, and do all that wiring and stuff. And there'll be a, a little building around it with a little roof on it. And the roof will be able to just lift right off in case we ever have to work on the pump. What about freeze protection? Well, it's going to be insulated with uh, like poly iso foam board and then we'll have regular like heat tape on it. But all this stuff I'm putting in the basement. The only thing that will be exposed to the weather is the this plumbing here the cycle stop valve might even go into the house all this stuff it'll just be a piece of pipe that goes up out of the wellhead and down into the ground which brings me to another point why are we not using a pitless adapter someone's gonna ask that why do we have to come up out of the wellhead and then go back down into the ground good question usually you would use a pitless adapter that you would come straight out of the well casing three feet underground and then go straight to your house that's what i've always seen up north. Apparently where we're at they're either against the law or they're not approved by code. I'm not sure why, I can't get a straight answer, but almost nobody in this state uses pitless adapters. They come straight up out of the wellhead and most of them keep their tank in a well house outside. We're not going to do that. Remember it uh, wasn't too long ago and we couldn't even run heat tape off of our we couldn't run heat tape solar system we couldn't get the yeah, pipes our, our solar panels wouldn't run heat tape it wouldn't run a light bulb now we wouldn't run the fridge yeah now we'll be able to just run everything <laughs> times have changed we're moving mm -hmm. up in the world what are your plans for the other well meaning the seep spring seep spring i have plans for the it other well. is really wet down there uh i think we'll probably pull that whole it, right now it's a seep spring so it's a concrete cylinder sunk down in the ground so that the water can seep up in and fill it as a as a spring box and then it we pump out of that and then it overflows into sort of a creek behind it i think probably what we'll do is just pull that whole thing out and let it fill dam off the creek and create a little spring-fed pond you know we were talking to the driller about building ponds and best way yeah. to line it and whatnot and uh yeah i think the that's stuff they used for the grout, supposedly bentonite. is the best best stuff is the bentonite chips. Mm -hmm. We could line that whole thing with bentonite chips and create a spring-fed pond, and use that for livestock. Ducks, I want ducks. Ducks, yeah. I want ducks. That's probably what we're going to end up doing. Way down the line, we have other priorities right yeah, now. Yeah, we got lots to do. Okay, all right. The big question: How much did it cost? Yes, everybody wants to know how much does it cost to drill a well. Are we broke? Yes. <laughs> Let me just say I had a little bit of rum today. <clears throat> uh, this, to this particular type of project completely depends on where you are in the country and what the market is for well drillers. If there's a lot of competition, you probably have a better price. If you're out in Colorado or Oregon... Man, we heard some crazy prices out there. You know, it can cost you 40 to $50 a foot just to drill the hole. And that's the big thing is you pay, regardless of whether you hit water, you're paying by the foot for the rig to drill the hole. It's a two part project. There's drilling the hole and then there's putting all the hardware into the hole to get the water out. <clears throat> In our area, we're fortunate to have six, eight, maybe 10 well drillers in our area. So the market's fairly competitive. And most everyone around here is running a well or a spring. We're in a big poultry industry in our area, like the Tyson chicken and all that. And they all run on wells. And so the well drillers are in good business, but uh, there's a lot of them. So our cost to drill this well was $12 per foot. And, and how many feet? We went down 
460 feet and then we had to put in 140 feet of six inch casing at six dollars a foot and the county requires that we grout at least 20 feet deep and that was four hundred dollars so i think it ended up being a little over six thousand dollars just to poke a hole in the ground and that's not the bump and that was not yeah that was not just the hole but once we hit water that six thousand dollars then became worth it up until that point it was it was a gamble it was totally a gamble we might have just lit it on fire and then we couldn't figure out how much more it was going to cost until we figured out how what the static head was or what the water level was when, which would determine our pump when, size when the water comes in and fills the hole they drill the hydraulic pressure pushes the water up to a certain point until it kind of equalizes with the force of gravity pushing down and it settles and that's what it's going to be and that's your static head that may improve over time as you use the well and if additional fractures open up and more water comes in but you want your static head to come up as high as you can because that determines how big of a pump you need and how deep you have to go to get that water out i measured it a couple different times our static head right now is 330 feet down that was an expensive pump and uh yeah so the so all in all, all what in are all, we in so far for just what we have right here well let me say one other thing i did all the pricing and, and the, I, I sourced the tank and the, and the t fittings and or everything the cycle stop valve the pump the wire the drop pipe and i could have gotten it for probably about almost a thousand dollars less than what they would have charged me to put it in but they had the truck and all the guts and they put more stuff on here than I would have put on here and they did this right this is totally worth the difference in what I would have paid versus what they charged so it came out they did an amazing job this ended up being all all in is about just shy of eleven thousand dollars for what you see here now for those of you guys that are just now Wait. choking on your rum and it doesn't even work yet because it needs power so I gotta hook the generator up to it at least until we get the house done now for those of you guys that are choking on the eleven thousand dollar price you you need to keep in mind you keep, keep everything in perspective this is going to be this is our retirement plan this is our forever home and I know there are a lot of people out there that go and it will will drop twice that amount on a vehicle or two vehicles or three vehicles you know eat out how many times per year and you know we'll spend that much money in, in food and, and whatnot and dining out beer all that kind of stuff you just think about a lot of the different extra things you spend money on the most important thing that you could spend money on in my personal opinion is one on land and two on water yeah. and land with water so this is a huge investment for us in our, re our overall game plan, our overall retirement plan. So overall, when you think about the security of having water until the day we die, ideally, um, <laughs> it's not well, that much. Well, also in perspective, like I said, out west, it's, it would have been it's $50 four times a foot to drill. This would have been a $50,000 expense for someone. Exact same setup, just as you see. So I'm, I'm all right with it. Where uh, we are, where you are, you have to yeah it's like i said you're asking us what does it cost to drill a well it totally depends on where you're at all right so the last question that i have here is now that you've drilled a well and know it costs what it costs and the trouble with it would you prefer to buy land with an existing well and pay a bit more or is drilling the well yourself worth the time and money that's a good question yeah that's all that all depends on time and effort and dollars and cents i mean you, if you find two equal pieces of property and one has a well on it and one doesn't uh, you got to know what the going rate per acre is and what it costs to drill a well in your area and just do the math. Keep um, in mind that but before it's a gamble. You, yeah, before you make an offer on a property that has a well, make sure you have the well water tested as a condition of purchasing that, well, that piece of land. Um, and if that well test comes back okay, then you kind of just, you're, you're good versus if you're, you've got an equal piece of property that doesn't have a well, and you know what a well costs to drill, you still don't know if you drill if you're going to get water. So that's a gamble. I don't know. It's, you really got to like that piece of property if it doesn't have a water source already on it. 
And fortunately for us, when we moved here, we knew we were gonna have we were gonna hit water somewhere because everyone around here has wells and all of their wells are clean so and we have water on the property and we have water on the property it was just a, a matter of all right find the right spot so yes it has been nerve-wracking but it wasn't like we were trying to drill in the desert and hope it, it was just so to answer your question if, if you know between two different properties uh, if you have one, that, if they're equal properties, it's always better to go with one with a well, so you don't have the gamble of drilling and not hitting water. Um, as if, long as the money works. As long, know, yeah. You know, if and, equal and properties, it's clean water. you know, same price. Same price, yeah. Yeah, then always, always go for the one with a well, as long as you test the water and it's, it's yeah. clean. Um, all right, so we have a well, and now what? What's the, then? What's the game plan? What's next? Was that the last question? No, that's my question. What's next? Are we going to start breaking ground next week? Jeez, oh, no. <laughs> what uh, what do you got see. going on with plans and? All right, so that? the house design model thing that I uh, built, I sent off to an engineer. And we, we designed our own house. Yeah, we designed six houses. <laughs> we designed six houses. The sixth and final, hopefully, design for this particular spot, uh, I sent off to an engineer a few weeks ago because I wanted him to make sure that the, the beams and the posts and the loads and the snow load and all, all that engineering stuff uh, he could do and stamp the plans uh, and give me a set of drawings based on those plans. And I got those that preliminary set of drawings back uh, yesterday and I'll be going over those in the next few days. Uh, so long story short, hopefully Within the next few days, we'll have an actual set of construction plans that I can start using to solicit bids from contractors to see what we're working with. Now, I don't know how long that's going to take. I don't know how fast we'll be able to get it done or how fast we'll be able to make videos because... No, nobody wants us to move yeah, along no, faster. I got to say that up here, it's four it takes four times as long to do anything as it does like in town or in the suburbs because it's hard to get people to come out here it's it's far and that's just part of the deal and people are backlogged <coughs> there's yeah. only so many people up here that do what they do yeah. and those people are backlogged and we just can't go and book everybody now without knowing yeah and, what's and, and work. for some particular trades you you need to go outside of where you are to find the right people to do that particular job because there's nobody available locally to do that correctly so we will the, an the answer to that is i guess uh you know we will take you along as things progress they might be a little slow especially as we start to get started here start getting started here in the next uh, probably a couple months i would say mm -hmm. i would say until you know until plans come back until we get bids back until we actually say you know pull the trigger let's go and start breaking ground um with the basement and whatnot it's it's probably I'm, i'd say we're at least two months out yeah, I mean, we'll make videos here and there about stuff we're doing if, if it's interesting, but we're not going to just make a video to make a video, I don't think. Um, <clears throat> we, we are 100% focused right now this year on working on this house, and so uh, if a video happens to come out of that, then you'll see it. But uh, other than that, we're that's what we're going to be doing. Look at that. Water. There's water in there. There's water in these hills. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining us for the dirt, and we'll keep you posted. Uh, so stay tuned for Whatever's whatever comes next. next. Check. Take it easy. See you in the next video. I'm gonna go drink this beer. Peace. And cry. <laughs>